What's up guys? Welcome back to Fancy Goldfish Fanatics. Today we are going to be setting up the filtration system for the brand new Around Aquarium. So make sure you stay tuned to find out more. Hey Fanatics family, welcome back. As always, check out those links in the description. Make sure you check out our website for all of your goldfish needs, whether it be maintenance requirements, parasite issues, bacterial problems, and just overall general up to up to date care and information that your goldfish needs. In today's video, we're gonna be heading over to the old marine tank, but the brand new fancy goldfish aquarium, and we're gonna be setting it up and getting it ready for its first inhabitants. What we're gonna be doing is sorting out the filter. I'm gonna put the lights on the tank for the first time. We're gonna have a little walk around tour about, about the tank and about the filtration system. And we're gonna have a little close look at it and how it is starting to run and how it's starting to mature and the different filtration techniques that I'm gonna be using on this tank. So I'm gonna head over there now and let's check it out. As you can see, this is the brand new Fancy Goldfish Aquarium or the Aranda Aquarium. In today's video, as I mentioned, I'm gonna be turning the lights on and we're gonna be having a full walk around tour of the tank, talking a little bit more about the dimensions, the volume. Obviously, those of you who do know this tank already, where I had the Marines in it, you will already know some of this information. We're gonna be focusing on the filter. I'm gonna be talking about what filter media I'm gonna be using and how much. And then I'm gonna be talking about how we're gonna get it ready for the Aranda because hopefully the next time we do a video on this tank, it will be ready for our first inhabitants and hopefully we'll be getting them potentially in the video after, but hopefully very soon after that, we will be getting its brand new inhabitants. So first off, let's talk a little bit about filter media. Now in this tank, I'm gonna be using a range of filter media, basically what I've got sitting around and lying around. I'm gonna be using five kilos of the Biohome Ultimate, I think it's called the large one, the really large chunky sort of stick of Biohome. I'm using around five kilos of that. And then also I'll be using around 25 kilos of Alpha Grog. Now 25 kilos is a lot of Alpha Grog. When you think about one of those large FX6 filters, they probably hold around four, potentially five kilos of media, but around that three to four kilo range. So I'm adding 25 kilos of alpha clog, which is probably around six FX6s worth of media, something like that. Plus I've got the five kilo of biohome and I'll be adding a few more little bags of media that I've got sitting around, some activated carbon. Now for the media, I'm gonna be holding it in mesh bags and they look just like this. So I've had these bags arrive today in the post. I believe they're 20, 25 centimeters by 30 centimeters around that sort of dimension. Now, generally I use a lot smaller bags, probably around a third of the size, and that is what my biohome is in currently. But because I've got so much alpha grog, I'm gonna be putting them in these bags. I think there's about 10 bags here. So hopefully I'll get around two, two and a half kilos in each bag, which will make cleaning and maintenance very easy. So for the mechanical filtration, I'm gonna be using filter fleece. And filter fleece just looks like this. It's a really fine grade fleece filter that catches all of the really small and large uh, bits of dirt and detritus, which will float around your water column. And it makes the water really nice and clear. Now, this is what exactly what I use for the marine tank as well. And I'll be probably changing this a little bit more often than the marine tank. I estimate every five to six days, I'll be changing this out for a brand new sheet. Now I get this on a really big roll, so it's super cost efficient and it's quite thick. It's probably about two, two and a half, three centimeters thick and that will sit on top of the filter. We'll head over to the filter in a second and I'll show you what it's looking like running with the airlift. We don't have a huge flow going through it because the goldfish don't need too much flow in the tank as they are quite large fish and we also have those bubble walls at the back. So that is what I'm gonna be using for the mechanical filter. I'll also have probably some sponges as well to catch anything that this misses. But this is basically my disposable filter section. It's so cheap, this stuff, and I'm just gonna be chucking it away, put a new piece on, and that's the filter cleaned. And then probably every 
three to five months, I'll be taking the bags of the Alpha Grog out of the filter, rinsing them out, draining the filter, and that's all the maintenance hopefully there will be to it, apart from obviously cleaning the sand. So without further ado, let's head over to the filter section, let's check it out, and let's see actually how much volume we've got in this filter. So as you can see, this is the filtration section of the tank. First of all, we have that large piece of filter fleece on top of the egg crate, which is catching all of the large and fine pieces of detritus and dirt that floats around the water column. Next up, you can see I've got a wave maker controller. Now I've got this wave maker running because it is on a battery backup system. So if in the event of a power failure, the wave maker will still provide flow and oxygen throughout the tank. And that should last for around 18 to 24 hours. You'll see also I have my Inkbird Wi-Fi temperature probe set up just underneath the wave maker. And then we've got all of those bags of Alpha Grog. Now I didn't stack them very neatly into the filter because I have so much space in that filter. However, if I was adding maybe another 10, 15, 20 kilos of media, I would stack it a little bit more efficiently so we could fit more in. Next up, you'll see we have the cover glasses on top of the tank to reduce any evaporation. Now the tank is 2.4 meters long. 0.9 meters wide and 76 centimeters or just over 2.5 foot tall and it has a volume of around 1600 liters you also see the bubble wall in the back along with the sand on the bottom now we do have quite a lot of substrate in this tank so it's going to be interesting to see how any dirt and detritus does build up in the system but hopefully the goldfish will constantly stir through it looking for food keeping all of that solids and detritus suspended in the water column so the filter fleece can remove it now as you can see there are a few bits of larger gravel dotted throughout the sand which I, as i mentioned i will be sieving out to remove those just for aesthetic reasons but overall i'm really happy with how the tank's doing the water clarity is lovely and overall i can't wait to get some fancy goldfish into this system it is looking absolutely brilliant now you have seen the full walk around tour of the tank, you've seen the filter, the filtration, the bubble walls we've got at the back and I've talked a little bit more about the tank. So hopefully the next time you see the tank we will be hopefully unboxing our new fish. I'm estimating that we're going to get those fish in around one to two weeks so the tank would have been set up for around that three week period. So I haven't really spoken too much about cycling this aquarium. I may have glazed over it briefly, but essentially what I'm gonna be doing is I'm not gonna be cycling this tank at all, and I'm actually gonna be taking some mature media from the Top View Ranch U Pond outside. Now I know those fish are fully quarantined, they have no issues, so I'm not worried about transferring any diseases or parasites over to the brand new tank. Now you have different options when cycling a new tank. First of all, you can do a fish in cycle. Next, you can do a fishless cycle. You can also do ghost feeding or ammonia feeding, which is a, a fishless cycle, so to say. But for this tank, as I mentioned, we're gonna get the fish, they're gonna go into the tank. I'm get, on the same day, I'm gonna remove a couple bags of media, maybe a little bit more, because those fish are still quite inactive. And then I'm gonna add that to this tank and then I'm going to feed the fish really, really slowly and in really small amounts, at least for the first two to three weeks. And then after that, we can start ramping up the food and increasing the feed rates. So what I'm going to do off camera is this tank has been sitting for around two weeks. I think it is one to two weeks now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a full water change. I've hoovered the gravel a few times and it's really, really quite clean, or the sand I should say. Hoovered that quite a few times and it's really quite clean now. Also, I've sieved out most of the larger chunks. I will be sieving the sand again just to remove the last bits of those slightly larger white rocks and white stones and any leftover shells from the old marine tank. Although it's absolutely fine as it is, just for aesthetic reasons, I want to remove them a little bit more. But I actually quite like the look of the sand with those little white bits in it. It's quite nice to look at and it's something a little bit different. Now, what I'm going to be doing, as I said off camera, I'm going to do a full drain down of this, siphon all of that sand again, remove all of those bits and pieces with the sieve. And then the next time you see this, hopefully we will be doing our unboxing. And then I'm going to take you through the journey of adding those brand new fish building up our collection and hopefully growing some absolutely amazing aranda. 
So that is it for this video. I'm not sure when the next video on this tank is going to be because it will be when we get our new fish. But hopefully you have enjoyed seeing the new setup. And if you've got any questions, please leave them down in the comment section. Or if you've still got any suggestions on what aquascape I could potentially do or whether I should just leave the tank bare, then please leave those down below. If you want to have your fancy goldfish tank or setup featured on the channel in our Rate My Tank series or our Tank Tour series, then you can also email me. The email is in the description, fancygoldfishfanatics at gmail.com, and I'll do my best to get your setup on the channel. So hopefully you've enjoyed this episode. As always, thank you all for watching. Remember to keep those water changes up, and happy fish keeping.